Hey there guys, Ian here and today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D tutorial and in this one we're going to be learning how to create kind of animal fur within Cinema 4D um, and the example I'm going to be using is a lion. Um, I created a few on Twitter the other day and people seem to enjoy it so I thought i would make a tutorial and what we're going to be creating is something a bit like this and this. So you can see we have a really nice variety of colour, length, um, kind of uh, curl and twist and all looks nice and realistic, um, especially this one we got some flat sections, some bits that spike up, clump together and it's all good. So I'm going to go through and show you how to make this uh, from scratch. So we're going to grab a plain object and we're just going to make a displacer which is a child of the plane and with this we're just going to go to shading noise and you can see we get some nice kind of distortion within the plane object and this just allows uh, for a bit of variation in the skin it's a bit too much so we're going to go down to something like two or three and that way we just get a nice smooth surface which I'm just going to increase the scale to 200 and increase the contrast a bit so now we have our perfect animal skin we're going to grab a texture from the content browser so we're just going to search for skin and these are all available for free within Cinema 4D and we're just going to grab this skin drag it on put it to cubic and there we go we got our perfect skin which looks exactly how human skin would look. Maybe we'll increase the segments and make it seamless and there we go. So we're going to need two lights for this and one's going to go up and over there and the other one's going to go a bit less up and over there and down a bit. So this is the light setup for the whole thing. We need to select both lights, right click and go to hair and light and we also need to add some shadows to both of these. So now these both have soft shadows and a hair tag. I'm just going to grab these two and make the shadow resolution around 750. So next we need to do is add some hair. So we're going to click on the plane, go to simulate, hair objects, add hair. And look, we have hair. So these are a bit too long. We're going to reduce these down to about 40 because... Um, animal fur normally is quite long, um, they don't seem to cut it, so we're just going to change the polygon mode to area and we're going to leave the count at around 500. If we render now we get some shadows and we have hair, so we're good to go. Uh, we want to move the hair so it's uh, down a bit, so we're going to go to simulate hair tools and brush. Uh, with the brush we can increase the radius and decrease radius using the open and close square brackets and we're just going to use this to comb our hair over to one side and we're going to shrink it down and just add some variation all over so you can see we have like it all going in a general direction but there is a bit of randomness within it all so Go into your different views and make sure um, everything is looking nice. Uh, maybe move them over a bit, them over, and when you're happy, um, you can line your camera up and have a bit more of a look. So I'm just going to sweep some of these over, and this looks nice. Uh, we're going to get a nice angle going on here uh, just using the camera tools zoom in a bit and this should be okay so we'll just drag some of these hairs over grab a camera so we have this position and drag some more of these just so we have a general direction that they're going in uh, they can have a bit of variation but overall they're all kind of sweeping down so this looks quite nice um, if we render this you can see we have this flowing movement all looks quite nice but the hair certainly needs some work to it so we have a hair material that adding the hair added um, and this is going to be our lion hair. So we can't be bothered to colour it ourselves so we're just going to use a texture and we're going to use the roots um, 
texture channel, which means that um, all the roots get colored from um, an image. And the image we're going to use is this fur texture, which I stole offline just by Googling lion fur. And so when we render now, we get lots of colors. Uh, they're way too thick um, at the moment. So we're going to go to our thickness, change the root to about 0.2, the tip to 0.05, and a variation of 0.1. Um, in the specular, we're just going to reduce this down a bit until we get something a bit like this. This looks quite nice. Um, the tip could be a bit um, smaller, so we're going to change that to 0.01, and now we get a nice pointed tip of the hair. So the length we want to change, so there's a variation of, let's say, 90. So now they're all a bit different. Um, the frizz will add just a bit of variation within them, but obviously this is way too much. So we're going to go down to about 10 or maybe a bit lower. And we've got clump, which will kind of tie some of them together. That's quite nice. A um, bit of kink will add uh, about five percent and this will give you like phrase of hairs and for now I think this will do the next step is to increase the amount of hairs we have so we currently have five thousand and segments of twelve that can go down to about seven and the count let's go to a hundred thousand and see how this looks obviously the more hairs you have the longer it'll take to render um, this is already looking quite nice. Uh, you can see we've got a bit too many, a uh, bit too much frizz going on there, so we'll change that. So let's go down to maybe four in the frizz, and the kink will go down to three. And we'll try this again. And this looks much nicer. Um, let's go ahead and make them a bit. Uh, less thick, so we'll go for 0.1 and try this. And a lot of this will be um, testing uh, to make sure you have uh, what you like um, before you do a final render. And I'm going to play with the curves of the length so we can get that tip a bit um, thinner. So we'll go for something a bit like this, maybe a bit tighter near the end and we'll do another render and you can see we get these really nice results with not much work at all so I'm happy with this for now um, I'll try reducing the length of the guides to something like um, I'll just type in the same number about 25 let's see how this looks um, and it's all just getting the look that you want so now we have a bit more overlapping we'll see if we can clump them together a bit more so we'll go for 20 with a clump of 30 and we'll give it a twist of one see what that does um, a lot of these values i haven't tried to play around with too much so now we get um a lot more clumping and this is pretty this is a cool look i think i'll go for this um and then i'll set my render to 1280 by 720 and i'll add some anti-aliasing i'm not sure if it makes a huge difference to this but uh, we'll have a look and you can go into your hair options here um, but I'm not going to touch them um, in this tutorial so we're going to set up a nice angle here and we're going to increase our count to 250,000 and I'm going to pause the tutorial here and come back when it's done rendering so here we have it it took the whole of 23 seconds but we have this lovely detail and the clumping in this I'm actually happier than um, with my old one and so we can see the old stuff here um, all the lighting all the kind of extra lighting and depth of field are done in post-production so this is kind of how the original ones came out so we're just going to save this image as a 16-bit TIFF file and I'm going to call this tutorial and save this and then we're going to jump into After Effects and we're just going to grab our tutorial file 
drag it into a new composition, make it 16-bit, and we'll have some fun. So let's sort out the lighting. So we'll make a new adjustments le uh, layer, call it levels, and we'll add the levels. So we need to kind of drag um, the top slider back and that will lighten our image and we'll just drag the other one in so we get some nice contrast um, without really using curves and it doesn't take too long so something like this will work nicely um, then we'll grab a new black solid and call it um, depth mat and in here we're going to grab a generate and ramp. Um, to see what we're doing we're going to lower the opacity and go into our ramp and drag the black um, kind of target and put it near the bottom left and the uh, white target and put it near the top right. So now when we increase the opacity again you can see we have this gradient going from black to white uh, if we pre-compose this, move all attributes and just call it depth map. Now we have our nice mat. Uh, we'll grab another adjustments layer, call it depth of field. And I'm going to be using my fresh lift depth of field. Um, we'll see what the iris is looking like. And I like to use um, 6 uh, for the facets and 0 rounding. So we have this nice um, iris and we're just going to put in our depth map and increase the radius. So now you can see we have lots of depth of field and if we just click where we want it to be in focus it looks really nice. I think the um, I haven't got the angle quite right so we're just going to go back in and just play with the sliders. So we're going to go for something like this I think and we go back to our tutorial and yeah this is looking better we'll just focus it around here and now it's kind of up to you what you do so we're going to add a vignette which is just a black solid and we're just going to grab a elliptical mask double click to fill it in and we're just going to drag uh, the bottom slider out and grab these two holding down control and dragging it up and then moving the whole thing down a couple of pixels so we get this nice curve at the top we'll invert the mask and go to our feather and feather it around 200 pixels and then go if you double click M to bring up the opacity we'll bring it down to about 50 so this is looking nice um, we might decrease the mask expansion by about 50 um, maybe a bit less, 30. Okay, and just play with these values until you are happy with something that you like. And here you go. This is how to create wonderful animal fur within Cinema 4D with very little effort at all. And you get this really nice depth of field. Um, we can give it some highlights actually, which I forgot to mention. Um, if you enable highlight mode, go to lightness and bring it down to about 1. 40, maybe a bit lower, and increase the intensity to 2. Now you can see we get this nice highlight over our fur. So this is the fur tutorial. I hope that you've liked it. Um, if you learnt anything, just leave a like and a comment below. It really helps me out. And I hope to see you in the next video.